Well, praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome once again to At the Master's Feet. I'm Pastor Regina Moore, and as I always tell you, it's such a blessing, such an honor, actually, to be able to join you in your homes every Tuesday at 1130. Thank you all for staying up, praise God. You know, it's it's a blessing. We count it an honor to be able to come and just share the Word of God with you, because that's what He has sent us to do. That is one of our purposes during this time during this broadcast is that we bring the truth of God's word. Amen. This is not a time where we're trying to make a name for ourselves or we're trying to lift ourselves up. There's already a name that we know, you and I, brothers and sisters, that we both know, and that is the name of Jesus. And we want to bring glory to his name. Amen. We want to bring honor to him. And that's what we want to do during this time time during this broadcast is to bring you the truth of the word. Amen. You don't need my opinion. You don't need what's popular. You definitely don't need what's political. You need the word of God. Amen. And I'm thankful to have the opportunity to do that. You know, Jesus even told the people in John chapter eight, he told them, he said, if you continue in my word, you will be my disciples indeed and you will know the truth. And the truth will what? The truth will make you free. Hallelujah. Nothing else can free us like the word of God. So we just want to make sure that that's what we're doing during this time with you is that we're teaching, that we're preaching, that we're proclaiming the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm just thankful to have this time, this opportunity, as I've said, to be able to come with you. You know, even in that time when he was teaching his teaching the people in John chapter 8, the truth he was teaching them was concerning himself. So that's what we want to talk about. When we come, we want to share the good news of Jesus and what he has done for us. He was telling them the truth concerning himself, that if they did not have him, that they would die in their sins. You know, God's will for us is for us to have the good life, to be a part of the kingdom. The kingdom is not just meat and drink, but it is righteousness, happiness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. He wants us to experience joy to the full. Praise God. So we want to make sure that we are living our lives to the full according to God's word. Amen. The precious promises that he has left and provided for us. And we don't want to take anything less. Amen. So it's just good to be able to come and share that with you. And one of the things we like to talk about, and you will hear us talking a lot about, is the fact that Jesus gave his life for us. He died. He died so that he would break the bondage off of our life to free us from sin and death. Amen. We just finished talking about that this past Sunday. Matter of fact, we read out of Galatians 5 chapter 1. I want to read that to you right now because I really want us to hear this again. This message, amen, of freedom, praise God. In Galatians 5 in verse 1, it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. He's saying, I have set you free. So why would you entangle yourself again into something or with something that's only going to bring you death and destruction? In other words, simply put, he's letting us know I've taken the handcuffs off. So don't put them back on. Amen. Simply put, I have released you. I have freed you. Then don't entangle yourself again. We have choices. Don't do it to yourself and don't, whatever you do, allow anyone else to do it to you either. Amen. The Bible tells us Jesus became a ransom for many. And you and I, brothers and sisters, know that the only time a ransom is needed is when someone has been kidnapped and being held against their will. 
Amen. So he came. He offered himself. He took our place. He was the great exchange by his blood, by his death on the cross. Amen. He took our place and he freed us in the in the snares, in the bondages that we were once held captive. And I, I know you will agree with me to say that is the good news of the gospel. Amen. There is nothing. If you've ever experienced any type of bondage, whatever it may be, it doesn't have to be a physical jail, but it could be something that's got you so held captive that you cannot enjoy life. You're full of fears and doubts. Amen. That's bondage. God does not, he does not want us, even in this season, the things that we're experiencing, he does not want us to walk in fear. What he wants us to do is to know our God and to trust him, to know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So that's what we want to continue to bring you during this broadcast. Amen. And we are just so thankful to have the opportunity, as I said, and as I continue to say, to just keep saying that we're thankful. We do not count this. We don't take this time lightly. We really do not. Amen. And I say we because past I as past and the congregation here at Soul Gathering Ministries who assist me and help me and pray for me and support me and support this ministry. We do this work together. Amen. So we just want to continue to just share with you the good news, the truth of the word of God. And then to just share a little bit about what the ministry is all about. Amen. This ministry birthed by God, the vision is very clear. The vision is to make minister the ministry of reconciliation. You know, we used to say the vision was to reconcile the loss and equip the body of Christ. But you know, when you really think about it, all of the reconciling has already been done. Jesus Christ has done that already. So what our job is now is to minister the ministry of reconciliation. And that is just simply sharing and reminding with you, reminding with those we encounter on a daily basis, on our jobs, wherever we may be, that Jesus Christ, that God loved us so much that he gave his best and his best was in the form of his son. So that is why this ministry was birthed to minister the ministry of reconciliation and to help equip the body of Christ to know their purpose and place in the body. Amen. To know what has God called you to? What has God commissioned you to? What is the call of God on your life? Amen. And that's why we are here. So that's why we always encourage you. You know, you're going to have information at the end of the show. Call us. Email us. We definitely still want the names of your unsaved loved ones. People are emailing those to us. They are telling us, listen, pray for my neighbor. Pray for my son. Pray for my family member. And I want you to know that we are committed to do just that. We stand in the gap with you. Amen. We stand in the gap with you. We join our faith with yours and we believe, we trust God that they will be saved. The Bible says if they hunger and thirst for righteousness, they're going to be filled. So we pray, God, let there be an increased hunger and intense thirsting for you, for more of you, because we know that it's not your will that any perish, but that all may come to repentance. Amen. So I wanted to just have the opportunity to just share a little bit about that, uh, about the ministry with you and why we are here. And once again, how blessed we are and how fortunate we are to have people like yourself to join us at this time. We appreciate you and we thank God for you. Amen. And so one of the things that we also want to share, something that I also want to share with you today, because many people wonder, Pastor Regina, how do I know? How do I know and understand what God's purpose is for my life? The only way we're ever going to know what God's purpose and plan or what he has destined our lives to be, the only way we're going to know that is we're going to have to go to the source. 
Amen. We're going to have to go to God. We're going to have to learn how to sit in his presence. We're going to have to learn how to be still. We read the scripture how we need to be still and know that he is God. Let me tell you, that is so important. If we're going to gain this knowledge, if we're going to have insight, if we're going to have revelation into what God is calling us to and what he wants us to do, why was I born? Why was I created? Why am I here? Go to the source. And I trust me, he will tell you and let you know, because there is nothing more important than getting in the presence of God and having time with God to hear his words. Amen. In other words, to sit at the master's feet. That is how this broadcast was brought about, how it was birthed, because we have to learn that there is nothing more pertinent, nothing more important in this season than hearing the voice of God. I want to read that scripture for, for you where we are taking this from. And it's John chapter 10. I mean, I'm sorry. In Luke chapter 10, it's very familiar. You all know it. It's the story of Martha and Mary. Amen. But I want to share a little bit with, of that with you to give you a little further insight of what God is saying to us. And then you will know when you begin to spend time with him, when you'll begin to have time at his feet, finding your quiet place with God, amen, and letting nothing disrupt that. Once you establish that time and place, then let nothing get in the way of that. It is priceless. I'm telling you, it is priceless. So let's look at John. I'm sorry, I keep saying John, but we're going to look at Luke, amen. Let's look at Luke chapter 10. I'm going to start in the 38th verse. It says, Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, now hear this. Listen to what Jesus told Martha. Jesus told Martha this. He said, Martha, Martha. And you know, every time, anytime you want to get someone's attention, you want to get your child's attention, you call their names more than one time. He calls her Martha, Martha. Thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Let me jump over to the Amplified and read it in the Amplified ver version of verse 41. And the Lord said, and the Lord replied to her, saying, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things things. And that's where I want to get to, learning how to overcome the anxiety, amen, in life when we're dealing with things or when things are dealing with us and we're becoming overwhelmed and you seem as if you cannot see your way out. That's the time when you have to settle your spirit and learn to sit at the master's feet and hear his word, no matter what's going on around you, no matter what is happening. I'm telling you, this is the solution to every problem. I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna share a little bit of my own testimony. Um, it was when God called me to come off of the job to begin the work here at Soul Gathering Ministries. And I, I, I knew I heard his voice. I knew what it sounded like. You know, I was familiar enough to know this is the timing. And he said unto me what I felt in my spirit, it's time for you to come off of the job. And I did not hesitate. I did not overprocess it as I sometimes can do. And I did not give it a second thought, but I prepared and made ready to come off of the job. Well, let me share something else with you is that I had not prepared as I should have for myself when it was time to come off, but I heard God's voice, which meant at that time I was willing to trust him and whatever it was he was telling me to do. 
But when I came off of the job and how many, you know, life started happening and meaning bills and everything else was going on and I wasn't prepared as I should have been, fear began to set in, anxiety began to set in, doubt, unbelief, did God really say this? Did he really tell me to do this? Am I acting out of my own will? Have I conjured up something myself? And I tell you, I would come to the church every day to pray, to get in the prayer room, to hear God. But how many of you know, I could not hear God in the noise of the anxiety and everything else that was going on around me. I couldn't hear what God was trying to say to me. I had to learn how to steal myself. I was so over the top that I was in the prayer room one day, I never will forget, walking back and forth, pacing, finally telling God, I'm going back to work. I can't handle this. I, you know, I, I didn't sign up for this, Lord. And I'm telling you, there was a voice within me that simply called my name. He didn't call me Regina, but he said, daughter. He said, daughter. Settle your spirit, quieten yourself, and sit down. It was at that point that the Holy Spirit taught me how to quieten myself in the presence of God. Now, I wish I could tell you that it happened overnight. I wish I could tell you that it happened in a week. But to be honest, it took about 365 days for your friend to get her spirit settled because I'm anxious on a good, not anxious, but just a little bit hyper on a good day. But it took me that long to get my spirit quiet quieted in the presence of God so that he could talk to me, so that he could speak to me, so that he could show me his plan. He already had it worked out. He already had the plan worked out. He already knew what I needed to do. I just didn't know it. Why didn't I know it? I said, I'm in his presence, but you're not still. You're not quiet. You're not seeking him. You're still involved in the anxieties that's going on, what you don't have, what you don't see, what you think you cannot have. This is the only thing that's driving you at this point. So I had to allow the Holy Spirit to teach me. Trust me, if you will allow him, he will do it. And you will find out that God is everything that he has promised to us that he would be. If we learn how to get still in his presence, and to seek him while he may be found. Amen. Because when he tells you that the door is open and you must walk through it, then you have to walk through it. But I had to learn the beauty of sitting at the master's feet to hear his word and his instructions for my life. He's going to do the same for you. He'll do the same for you. He'll tell you how to be the type of mother that you desire to be, the type of husband, pastor, whatever it is, the Holy Spirit is available to help us. But once I did that, God began to open up my eyes. He began to speak to me and show me something that was right in front of my face that I couldn't see because I was too worried and distracted. Amen? So I had to learn, quieten yourself in God's presence. Sit at his feet. You're listening to a broadcast every week. The words that come, they come because we've taken the time to sit at the master's feet and hear his words. Amen? It is so important. Martha made an appeal to Jesus. She made an appeal to him because, now let's just be honest, women, we know how it is when guests has come to the house and they came unannounced and things are not just right. Well, everyone wants to be spoken well of once people leave our homes. Amen? So now she's got this crowd of people that she hasn't planned for, and now they need to be served. Amen? They need to be cared for, made comfortable. Jesus is in the house. The disciples are there and all of those who came with them. So she, her mind has shifted to something else, which is very natural. But he's teaching us in this scripture that we are not just natural people. 
we are supernatural beings. And when the Holy Spirit comes, we have to stop. And what, whatever we're doing, wherever we are, whenever he shows up, we have to stop what we're doing so that we can hear. So she made an appeal. Don't you see what is happening? God always knows what's happening with us. He always knows what's going on. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows our down sitting and our uprising. Our thoughts are far off. Of course he knew what she was dealing with. Of course he knew that this was important to her, but this was his response when she made the appeal. My sister is not helping me. My sister has left me to serve by myself. Jesus' response to her was, Mother, you're anxious. You're worried and concerned about so many things. Yes, this is important to you. Yes, it's something that's happening in the moment, but it's not needful. It is not needful at this time. It's not the necessary thing, the most important thing that's going on in your house right now. The most important thing that's going on in your house right now, Mary has found it. Mary has found it and she's come to where it is. Mary has chosen to sit at the feet of Jesus. Amen? To hear his word. He told her, you're anxious about so many things. And listen, that's what he's telling us right now. We can get so anxious about so many things. And one thing is needful. And that is that we learn how to sit at his feet, how to hear his words, how to hear his voice, how to know how else are we going to know the direction for our lives if we don't get into the presence of God to find out. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall, not he might, if you acknowledge him by taking time in his presence, if you acknowledge him, God, I cannot do this without you. There is no way I'm going to know the plan. I'm not going to know how to get out of this situation. I'm not going to know the next moves to make. I'm not going to know what to do concerning my family, concerning my wife, concerning my husband, concerning my children, concerning my job, concerning the ministry. I'm not going to know any of those things without you. One thing is needful. Mary chose it. Today we've got to do the exact same thing. We have got to make a choice. Amen. We have got to choose Jesus. Everything that's going on in our world, everything that we're listening to, and I want to encourage you, I would choose, pick and choose my time to listen to things that's coming over the airwaves, amen? Just use some wisdom with, their, with that and where that is concerned. Spend more of that time at the master's feet, amen? Hey, listen, I, I'm gonna stop right here because I want you to know I'll pick up again on next week, praise God. We wanna talk a little bit more about this, the importance of sitting at the master's feet, praise God, and hearing his words. There is nothing like it, nothing to be compared to it. Let me tell you, I found I found that out. I found that out when I did not know what direction, which direction to go in. What am I going to do, Lord? I have left my job. I thought this is what you told me. Well, if you believe you heard God, either you did or you didn't. And I can understand we'll get in those times when that's the enemy's plan. He wants you to doubt what God has told you to do. Amen. But let me tell you something. If God calls you to it, he will support you in it. I am a living witness. Amen. Praise God. So I want to continue to share more about this concerning this broadcast, concerning the name that God has given us at the master's feet. There is so much that we will learn when we take time to get in the presence of God to hear his words. Amen. Now, I want to just 
thank you all. Those of you, you've been sowing. Praise God. I appreciate God for you. Amen. Those of you who are praying for us, we need you to pray for us. Praise the Lord. Because as I said, we're not just coming on as if we have nothing else to do. We believe that God has called us in this time for such a time as this to be a part of TV ministry. Amen. So we're just thankful for that. So at this time, I, I didn't want to do this too early because I wanted you to have a chance to get to know us and us build a relationship. But as I said, those of you, you've already been sewing. I'm going to go back and look. I pulled something off today and get that name and address. And I just want to be able to bless you with this CD. It is a song and a song uh, music track of a song that God actually gave me, gave us here in this house and was recorded by myself and um, those here in the body. Some of those here, that's a part of the ministry. And it's entitled, Lord, Come in This House. God gave me this right here in this house, praise God. And I'm just thankful for for what he did. Amen. You could not have told me that God would have blessed me to be able to write a song, then have that song published and then put on CD. You want to partner with us? We welcome you to do that. Amen. And we don't want to limit you on a, on a, on a cost or on a price. I just ask that you just seek the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord that you just seek the Holy Spirit and whatever he tells you to do, I just ask that you do that because I may say a number and your first thoughts was, I want to do a whole lot more than that. Praise God. But I, I'm thank, I just want you to know I'm thankful. I am so thankful. But we want to get this to you. This is offer number 101. You can call, email us. You can call us at 501-773-1400 and we will get this sent to you. Um, you will not have to worry about postage or anything like that. Just give us a call or go to the email address, soulgatheringministries at yahoo.com. Praise the Lord. You can give through PayPal there. Amen. And we're just grateful. We're just so thankful. Keep sending us the names of your unsaved loved ones. Please do that. This is what God has called us to, and we make it our business to pray. We make it our business, amen, to reach out to the lost. We make it our business to minister the ministry of reconciliation, amen. So I'm just thankful for you all right now. I love you in the Lord, and we're going to see you on next week, and we'll talk more about what God has given us, praise the Lord, at the Master's Street. We love you. We appreciate you. Be blessed, amen. Thank you for joining our program at the Master's Feed with Pastor Regina Moore. Soul Gathering Ministries is located at 7600 South University Avenue in Little Rock, Arkansas. For more information, call 501-773-1400 or go to soulgatheringministries.org. You may also email us at soulgatheringministries at yahoo.com. Join us next week for another inspiring word from Pastor Regina Moore.